All right, y'all, we're here. Dot cost an interview 2.0 with uh, Daco, so that should be interesting. I'm curious. Um, I could have just done this live. That'd probably be better, but you know, oh well. I don't really feel like setting up a live stream for this. But in any case, I'm curious. Let's get into it. Whenever it starts, you can see all the people excited. Make sure you guys go show some love to Daco for the 10 year anniversary of FNAF that's coming up soon. Yeah, I'm curious. We'll, uh, excited to see what um, happens in this. My friends, me. wow. I hope someone said that. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I am ready. I want to know what's going to be said. You know, I'm curious. I am curious. And I felt like I should watch this because, I mean, I'm trying to be involved with all the stuff that's going on lately for this um i also need to go i need to also look uh snap scott games uh, i want to look at their vip as well probably download that Need to uh, download this as well, but I don't have much time right now. I don't know. Not really sure how you do it, honestly. I'm curious because I want to do this for video too. How do I buy it? Yeah. Wow, one cent. Nice. Ooh. Yep. Let's go. Whoa, okay. Well, while that's happening, I'm going to give you this book. It's supposed to be free, but whatever. I saved it. Guess I don't really need a uh... I think as the 10 year anniversary is upon us, I will give this as my as my gift to the fan base on this 10th anniversary. What's in the box is nothing. He's going to say it's there's nothing in there. That's what he's going to say. He's going to say there's absolutely nothing in there. Oh, <laughs> <Aww. laughs> 
Hey, Mabel. Yeah, she's the best. What's coming on, guys? Stalker back again. Hope you're fantastic today. And it's the 10 year anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's. It is August the 5th, which means if you've been looking at the list, what the official Twitter has been saying, it's the interview with Scott Corbin, mm -hmm. everybody. Hey, yeah. everybody. How's it going? Darko, good to see you again. Yeah, it's six years <laughs> since the last interview, Ooh. right? Which is crazy. Wow. Uh, a lot of things have been happening since then. So let, let's go back a little bit. So the interview was August 2018. Yeah. So after that, we got help wanted. True. Special delivery, mm. security breach. Help Wanted 2, Ruin DLC, so there's a yep. lot going on. Mm -hmm. yep. And of course, the future games as well. Yesterday, uh, Steel Wool has announced something. I don't know what it is yet because we're recording this yeah. you know, a couple of months before. But guys, whatever it was, I hope you're very excited for it. Future Dorco, Into the Pit as well. Stuff to look for. There's so much stuff to look for. Oh, interesting. To. This and was recorded cool a long while ago. Like, um, a week uh, of exciting things for the 10 year anniversary, you know. We've never seen something like this before. Ten years of Five Nights at Freddy's, which is yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? Man, I can't believe I can't believe it's been so long since our last interview. That really seems like just uh, it, it doesn't. How long did you say ago it was? Six years ago? Six that's years that's hard ago. to believe. I know. That's impossible to believe. I know, right? Um, yeah. I've actually got a song for you that I'm going to play for you to celebrate the ten year anniversary. Okay, now well, th this is getting things off to a kind of an awkward start, but I'll let you go on ahead. <laughs> okay. Awkward. Wait, you're gonna be performing. Wait, you're gonna be performing this yourself, or is something recorded? I've got the harmonica right here. Oh, oh a harmonica. I've okay, been, my favorite. I've been practicing this song for over 32 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not so, 32. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> come on now, you started this. Right. Yeah, come okay. on, buddy. Ready? I'm Chill. really good. I'm really good. Okay. Now I will admit that I, I couldn't actually hear that. I don't know if your I don't know if your thing was cutting the audio out. Well, I actually played a spell. Oh nice. Oh. The spell is from 1864 by a wizard. Named Dewey Muscruy. Uh, that spell has now hypnotized you mm -hmm. to tell me all the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, jeez. Now, I thought we talked about this in advance. Now, listen. <laughs> this this is a bad idea to start talking about lore. All right, well, here, you have to give me specific questions, and I'll <laughs> see what I can answer for you. Fair enough. Yeah. I but I make, I make no promises. Scott's. Tell me what's in the box. What is wow, it? Wow, just direct. Just yeah. just out and direct, just like that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, look, okay. It's the 10-year anniversary, okay? And even though I like to be elusive, I like to kind of tease the fan base, I like to... And, and I do like there to be an air of mystery about things. Sometimes I do let things go on for too long. And I understand yeah. that sometimes things become not fun anymore and things can become frustrating for theorists. So, okay, I think as the 10 year anniversary is upon us, I will give this as my as my gift to the fan base on this 10th anniversary. What's in the box? Nothing. Is. Hey, that's the connection lost to Houston Juniors. Oh my God. And that's about it. And, th and that's it, man. We all know he said literally nothing, right? So, so like we've been speaking about, ten years of Five Nights at Freddy's, which is a crazy amount of time. Uh, I can't believe we're still here. Uh, it, it's been such a journey. So, I just wanted to ask you: uh, Do you have a highlight moment for the whole ten years of Five Nights at Freddy's since 2014? I, I, I think I think there have definitely been a lot of a lot of satisfying moments. Like obviously, if if whenever one of the new games would come out and it would be positively received. That was obviously a huge relief. You know, there's never been any goal other than just huh. giving everybody what they were really hyped up about. Yeah. Because, you know, when you when you see everybody getting hyped up and getting excited, if suddenly something comes out that just is a, a big letdown, there's just no, there's no greater fear, I think, for a game developer. So um, that was always 
satisfying and a relief. But I think the I think this the series is so nice. Was probably just going to the movie theater to watch the movie when it finally came oh, out. Oh yeah, because, yeah. You know, behind the scenes of all of the games mm-hmm. throughout the years. Yeah. And behind the scenes That's of like all the books the, being written one of the and biggest everything things else, there was always the movie. The movie was out. just a slow burn project, even just starting as late as 2014. So that has been in the background being, you know, progressing for almost the entirety of uh, that. No, no, not almost the entirety, the entirety of that first nine years. Um, so to be able to actually go sit in the theater and hear the reaction from everybody and hear the fans really enjoy it. That was definitely uh, th- that was definitely a moment of of just re- re- real happiness for me. I think literally nine years. Uh, yeah, you know, the movie's been in the do, works for so know, many years. It's uh, actually crazy. Right as well. I know you've said on post before you've had so many scripts made. For yeah. The, movie. The, the 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 plushies in Manhattan or something. That was one of the scripts. So yeah, it yeah. was. Uh, yeah, I can imagine how you know difficult it's been like trying to get it all done you know i can just imagine well i can't imagine it because i'm not you but you know when it when me raz and ryan and baz uh went to a premiere for it and sat down at the cinemas and we all looked at each other at the end and we had to like we, <laughs> we couldn't believe it that's we, we didn't even make the that, game it was since, i watched you know, it in theaters it was one. so but cool we all said, i like, loved imagine it imagine how scott's feeling right now you know just sitting down and seeing it actually you know on the big screen it was so it awesome crazy, i loved it crazy feeling when i saw map yeah, pack i've been through the process it was so funny you know, i can tell you that it's a miracle that any movie gets made just being through that process just how many wheels have to be turning at the same time um and how many Scott's things, huge. And even though this process Adam took a long time for me, buff, you know, Hollywood works at just blazing speed where there's a hundred things happening at the same time and it's a miracle that these things get coordinated. And sometimes things don't work out, but sometimes they do. On, on the day that I was driving to New Orleans and the shooting was supposed to start the next day, on that drive, I was on the phone. It was, it was like a five-hour drive from where I was. I was on the phone the entire time trying to finish uh, contracts and finished negotiating points because there were still open items with uh, there were still things that needed to be resolved with <laughs> while he was driving Universal why is he Blumhouse, always dr- why is uh, he always working on this guild. series there were, uh, uh, just Louisiana there were all of these in a vehicle at any the same one time. of them not being he did that with FNAF 1 and the other FNAF film. games too. And all of them, all of those conversations were happening at the same time and all of them depended on one of the other ones and so that was a very stressful drive, but that's just the way that that's the way that Hollywood works. It's there's a million things happening at once. Um, it was it was definitely a whirlwind, but to see all of those pieces come into place, um, yeah, it, it was it was it was pretty remarkable. And and yeah, like you were saying, just all of the scripts. Oh, there's so many scripts. Um, starting starting just with 2015, um, you know, there were a couple of deals that weren't very good that I'm very fortunate. Uh, didn't pan out but then whenever i was with warner brothers briefly that that was a good deal and i was very very grateful to have that um but but even that whenever the stars seemed to have aligned things just didn't work out there either and so i was really fortunate to meet up with jason blum and get to have a lot of faith in the project and they were following my lead on a lot of things you know sometimes to a fault because lots of times i would throw things out and want to start over but uh you know they, they they were with me the whole journey they were with me and they believed oh in the he did a great job with them um, everybody just had the fans now. at heart that's all anybody wanted to do we, everybody was just making sure that every part of the movie would be something that the fan base would look at and recognize or relate to or connect with and i think in True. the end we were able to accomplish that and um i'm just really happy with that and I think we landed with just the perfect cast, which again, that almost didn't happen either. There were a oh, couple the cast of instances was perfect, bro. where I was actually so impressed else was by the about cast. to get a part. And then something would happen that would make that not work out. And then someone better would step in. And I've, you know, and I've said this to, you know, uh, my contacts at Blumhouse numerous times just over this last six months, even since the movie came out thinking, aren't we glad that we got like Josh Hutcherson for this role? Like, isn't it great we had Elizabeth Lale for this role? Isn't it awesome we had Matthew Lillard for this role? 
you know, isn't a great yeah. end up with Piper Rubio for this role. Like it, every single person that we ended up with was just it was, absolutely that was perfect so funny and perfect. And perfect and everybody was just a delight to work with. Um, once again, since I'm new to kind of the film industry, I got to talk to people about their other experiences on other projects. And it can be really scary because usually, from what I understand, every production has one <laughs> one member of the cast or one person on staff or just one person that, you know, causes problems or something like that. Sure. We didn't have anything like that. Nothing like that. Oh, good. Everybody nice. was just phenomenal. Um, they were just a joy to work with and getting to go to filming was was really fun mm. so it, it, was, it was a really fun experience and in the end i'm just happy that the fans were happy with it now that's not to say the film didn't have um it's places where it could have been improved and we're all you know and we all me and emma and jason blum were definitely chat about that and looking to make sure the second movie is um a, a step up and an improvement so lots of good things to look forward to i think i am excited yeah it's exciting and yeah you're right about the fan reaction uh the fans absolutely loved it like we all can't wait for the next movie it's so exciting and i'm so glad like um it's actually happening as I well i know it's um, so awesome so, yeah, exciting times so yeah you said that you've got a highlight of the 10 years of fnaf um if you could go back and change one oh, thing oh, oh. in those 10 years do you have anything that you would change? You can't say the box. <laughs> <laughs> the box. No, you, you know, the, the one thing I, would the change, I wish I could go back and have one more shot at FNAF World. I really, really do. Um, I, I, I know it still would probably definitely be the oddball in the series. No yeah, doubt. but everyone loves and maybe, it. Maybe, maybe I, it's my favorite FNAF a, game. A poor decision in general, but there were just a lot of bad decisions made at the beginning of that project that doomed it from the start. Like I was making it with mobile in mind, so it was a really slow resolution. I was thinking about it as a game on the phones. Um, I tried to make the whole game on 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 one frame and click Team Fusion. That just means I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't allowing it to be as big as it could have been. I was trying to cram it all together for my own convenience. Um, there, there were just there were just several decisions that were made. Please make a fan for um, tour. That really hindered please, that. And also, please. I was in a rush because I was getting, I was getting a little arrogant, thinking that hey, anything I make is going to be gold. You know, yeah, and, and then I was definitely, yeah. I definitely ate some humble pie with that really, really quick. Yeah. And I learned that that is not the case. <laughs> and so I, I've tried to be very careful not make that mistake again after that. But yeah, you know, if I could go back and I love thing, I, I wish I could maybe work with a different developer. And just really make it a, a, a high resolution game, get in some Please really good graphics. Please make a chat to, like you know, a update graphics. three I, or I, a new I, It could world. have been a good game. Could have been a good game. Who knows? M maybe somewhere down the line, if I get really antsy about it and have a lot of free time on my hands, may maybe FNAF 2 or FNAF World 2 might be a thing. Please. Yeah. I was about to say that, it, you know, you, you could still get a, a different company to do a, a FNAF World game. It's not over yet. I think I've said this to you before. I love FNAF World. <laughs> I think it is so underrated. And I always say FNAF World is underrated. I, I love, love it. it so much. There's just a charm to it. I, I really do. And I know you don't like it, but I absolutely love it, man. I, it, I really do. I love everything about it. If, if, I, if, I, if, if I'd spent, if I had allowed myself to work on it for one more year just like really double its development cycle and let it be a, a high res game i bet it would have been i bet it would have really been something but like i said who knows maybe for the sequel someday <laughs> Let's move please on to steel wall uh, the amazing steel wall studios that was the next game after ultimate custom night help wanted one of my favorite games uh in vr i absolutely loved it what has it been like working with steel wall uh were you nervous about it because i know it, it's a, it's a big thing to you know give a company your baby basically and let them you know do what you've been doing for the past five years um how was it for the first time letting um, someone else work on fnaf i was really nervous about it i was really nervous um you know i, I went several years still doing it by myself even after i had yeah. even after i had the financial ability to pay other people again i, I wasn't in that mentality of being able to do that so even though i could have done that I was still doing things just all by myself, all the way up through Pizzeria Simulator. Mm -hmm. yeah. But by then, Pizza it, Sim is by awesome then it was, too. Yeah, I knew that it was getting too much for me. I knew I, that I had it. to find another partner for it, and I was scared of that because you know there are stories all over the internet available about just <laughs> games that went completely wrong because of games being mismanaged in the yeah. hands of you know development companies. And I'm yep. sure that all of their pitches on the surface would have sounded the same, but 
I really got lucky. Uh, for that oh, reason, this I really is VR like gameplay in the background. Also with whereas the, um, I probably could have the, uh, accidentally ended up with a Princess company Quest that did song. botch something. I didn't. I think I, I really honestly believe that I landed with the the best, just one of the best, one of the best development companies. Um, they've been just a, a pleasure to work with, and they've they've done a really great job. Um, you know, this this last one they did, Ruin. I thought it was just so much fun, so much fun. And, and I think that might be one of the uh, I think that might be my favorite thing that they've made was Ruin. Ruin was and awesome. Things they I have planned, that. which I'm not going to talk about right here, but but the things that they have planned are really exciting too. So oh please, yeah, yeah, I've, been, I've been really happy. It's been I a think really good experience. they're saving that well, for the school announcement in a couple days. I'm happy with help, how Help Wanted come out came out because at the time and i don't have i don't have this anymore i don't have a 3d i don't have a vr setup anymore but whenever the first help wanted came out i did have a vr setup so i was able to beta test and of course i was leading the charge to want to beta test my own games yeah i got into the fun time auditorium and fun time and and i noped out of it i i took the headset off and i immediately got on the phone with steel one said i'm not doing it i'm, I'm not going to test it you test it you're going to test it you'll find someone else to test it i didn't even He's get jump scared, scared by foxy i was just in there in the dark and i knew i wasn't going to do it and i never played it again and i never played help once and i and i never played help once two either and i'm not going to He's too scared it though, right because um in the past like when i've obviously done videos on help wanted one and two i get a comment saying like um, oh, it, it's not that scary. You overreacted. It's not that bad. But you don't know until you've literally put on the headset, right? Yeah. It, it's completely yeah. different, you know, just watching it from a screen is compared to having the actual I'm sure it on. is. It's I terrifying. have no idea. Yeah, completely different experience. My other question, Glitch Trap is one of my favorite characters in, in FNAF now. I absolutely love Glitch Trap. Um, yeah, that's not obvious. Glitch Trap as a whole, uh, with, you know, with the development of help wanted i love the character and and i know that this is this is kind of one of the places where i i know that there's a little bit of a divide with maybe me and the fan base or maybe just within the fan base because i i always lean sci-fi i have a tendency to lean you, sci-fi yeah. mm -hmm. even though i like i try to come back into the roots of of the supernatural instead but uh, i can't help my inclinations to lean sci-fi so anything that involves possession of uh, AI or possession of uh, machines or circuitry that I, I, I love that sort of thing. So I love the idea yeah. of glitch trap. I'm not a huge fan I'll... of the name. And here's the way that these here's the way that these things happen. Okay, and this happened with burn trap too. Whenever I'm in the div whenever I'm in the planning phase with steel, <laughs> we come up are with so temporary sometimes. names for these characters. You know, whenever so whenever we're doing the the pre production document, yeah. I'll say, oh, well, he's glitchy. We'll call him glitch trap. Oh yeah, he's burned. We'll just call him Burn Trap. But then those names get embedded in the source code because because they use those temporary names also. <laughs> and once they're in the source code, and once someone finds them in the source code, that's it. Like that that's the canon name now. Yeah. There's nothing I can do about it. And 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 hopefully hopefully we're learning our lessons going forward. Yeah, don't to, do to, that. To maybe find <laughs> I, I don't know to, to to just hone hone in on a, a better process there because yes, I love the character. Not a huge fan of the name, but it is what it is for now. Well, you know, the name it, is it's, never it's, changing. It's the name. Oh, I that's... love Glitch Trap's name. <laughs> 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 it, it would, uh, could you think of a name, like, on the spot, like what you would want to call him or not? Oh, I, I have no idea. But you know what? A good example is uh, Mexus, you know, from Ruin. Oh, Mexus. Now, that was a character where even in just my design of the game, I, I thought that through and I and I came up with that. Um, and I'm really happy with it. I, I really like that name. It's a really cool name. Max but now, see, if I didn't have one of those ready to fire off, I might have thought up something like I don't know, purple trap, or, purple or, trap, <laughs> you yeah. know, or AI trap, or just something temporary. Yeah. And that would have been the can name. That oh been God, so much worse than, than Maxis. <laughs> so, After help wanted, yeah. uh, Max is a great breach. name. I really like that. Name. Uh, were you happy with the release of Security Breach when it first came out? Um, security breach. There, there's, there's a really big story behind that. Um, that, that was definitely a challenging period, and a lot of things, yeah. a lot of things, just didn't align up uh, perfectly wow, that for that. Funny. And there were a lot of reasons for that. I mean, obviously, I, you know, I hear lots of studios and things kind of blame COVID for stuff, but there is a reason for that. You know, COVID took well structured work systems and suddenly scattered them. And expected the work to continue to flow and it just doesn't work that way I, from my understanding i'm pretty sure 
most, if not every member of Steel Wool got scattered mm -hmm. across the country and were trying to just carry on with the workflow. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it's just, it, it was, was just hard. really difficult. Really, really I, hard. I think that, that's really the only example when um, my idea of how a game was going oh, to go was from misaligned Hellboy, with how things were going with Steel Wool. And I had, I had a specific story for this in mind. Okay, for Security Breach, I really did. I had a very specific story in mind, and it is very different than the one that got in the game. And I think a part of that is the way that I conveyed oh, that. To that's, Wool. What, that's what people Because what about, I was yeah. trying to do was I was trying to tell Steel Wool to do specific things throughout the game. So he, he I mean, obviously, because it's still his places. franchise, he owns it. He still tries specific to specific characters do certain have... things. Meanwhile, not telling them what he, the story plot was. He wants because I, in my head, I was thinking, okay, when people find this, they will connect this to this to this, and it will all be revealed. And I thought I could do that without telling Steel Wool the story plot. That didn't work out very well because they no. got all of these pieces, and they thought it was their job to connect them in a way that made sense. And so, really, what you ended up having were the same pieces. But yeah. telling completely different yeah. stories. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and since I work. was trying to kind of tell a specific story with mine that went a certain direction, they were taking pieces I didn't fully I'm understand. I'm really interested to, to see if they actually and again, did it I the way Scott for wanted. I myself for that because I guess what I should have done is just said, hey, here's the story. That here's why these pieces I'm are here. Here's how they're supposed to connect. Or and I'm gonna, I can give you a really easy up. example for this. And, and I'm, I'm hesitant to say this because I don't like messing with the lore. But I think in this case, it's okay. When it comes to Burn Trap, originally, Burn Trap was never supposed to move. He was supposed to just be something you saw in the corners, or like if you were walking past the machinery, you might be able to peek in between two things and see him in the corner or propped up against oh. the wall. Almost like almost like a, a some kind of decaying movie prop and you never fully understood what his purpose was and he had a very specific purpose and i'm not going to say what that purpose was because but i would realistically yeah. he never moved well obviously that's not what we got in security breach <laughs> in security breach we got a capsule opening and purple smoke flowing out and him climbing out and coming to get you <laughs> and so it's just not, not quite the same thing so but anyway yeah it, interesting. it, it, it didn't happen okay. anybody wanted but hey whenever that happens just like whenever uh you know i stepped in it a little bit with fnaf world you know me and steel will got together we were like look all that matters now is making things right by the fan base. That that's all that matters. You know, we we all had the best intentions going on. We all wanted yeah. to, to make a good product, and we went in and we made uh, ruin for it. And and I and I, I hope that, that uh, redeemed the game, and I, I feel like it did because I think it was really great. Ruin did a really good job. And and yeah, and anything that we yeah, do going forward that continues is uh, weird, that story or yeah. has the same themes, um, I, I I think we're just going to be in a much much better situation to to continue on. So, uh, the Rune DLC came out uh, a year ago now. Which yeah, is oh my god, out. yeah. Time's Ugh. going so quickly, and the fan reaction to that was amazing. Yeah. Everybody loved it, and everybody's looking forward to what's next. Um, the ending of Ruin, uh, with a specific character that came out, a new character, the, the, the Mimic. Um, any thoughts Let's on the Mimic? Go. Uh, I, I, I cannot share any thoughts on the Mimic, other than I really, really like that character this is a character that i'm that i really like and i'm really excited about i think it's a really terrific uh antagonist and i don't think it's the last that we've seen of the mimic that's all i'll say well yes. of course that's not surprising that, do you have a favorite character in the steel wool i mean music man is too obvious uh, too obvious of an answer, oh right? what do you map I mean, I, I, no the, uh, I, I think i think all of those all those characters map turned out great. In, in fact i think this is why it's hard to pick a favorite because all of them turned out so well you know um, I've always really, really liked. I've always really liked Vanny as a character. I don't think that Vanny was utilized no. to her fullest potential. No. And so hopefully we'll see another opportunity for uh, for Vanny to return. Ooh, as well. we'll see. Really? Ooh, okay. Moving on. To Give me the books. Uh oh. So the That's... books have been amazing. Well, um, not all of them, I've but been doing a lot of them are pretty good. Videos on the channel with Fazbear Frights. Uh, that that was awesome. Um, how has it been working on Fazbear Frights? It, it's actually really enjoyable. It's probably one of the most enjoyable things that I do because um, I just get to think up a really scary scenario. Yeah. And then I create a, 
maybe a, a 10 to 15 page story out of it. And then I have writers that I work with, obviously, and they take that and they really flesh it out and fill it out and add the details and turn it into a full length story. And I get to kind of just really see it come to life. That's so cool. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been really enjoyable. Similar and to that's the, something that I really enjoy. Uh, it's, it's, the Tales from it's the It's funny Pizza because it's one of those story. things where as long as I know that that's, that's something that's happening in my life, I might be at the gym or I might be watching the show and oh yeah scott is swole by mind. the way like, i don't know oh, if man, any of you have seen the pictures of him on twitter right man he is buff Do you have a favorite story out of all of them i think my favorite story has it, it, it's probably bunny call i know what that's the... kind of an oddball choice but there's a reason for yeah, it that's a random story some of these stories are based on my real life experiences bunny call is not completely made up uh, i used to take my family to a family summer camp okay this is one of my two, this is my two, my two oldest boys were maybe 11 and 12 at the time. Or, no, no, no. I bet they were 13 to 14. It's hard to remember exactly when this was, but my, but then I had younger two that were just babies still. And yeah. whenever we showed up at camp and we were all in the auditorium signing up for activities, you know, it was rafting and boating. One of the things you could sign up for was a panda call. What? The okay. Heck? And a panda call was, it's a very deceiving title. What does that even mean? Because what that meant is that early in the morning, a bunch of the camp counselors dressed as killer clowns wow, that's would come awful. into your cabin and scare the crap out of your kids to wake them up early and drag them off to their daily oh activities. Oh my God, that's awful. And so I signed up my two my two oldest you know my, uh, ian and Braden, you know my old beta testers or whatever they you know for all their lives testing my games i, I signed them up for oh it. yeah thought, oh yeah this will be kind of fun it was kind of fun until the next morning started rolling around i started thinking about what i'd done you know because then the next morning i woke up at five in the morning and i realized they're out there somewhere like the, this this is happening right now and i started listening for screams and I started listening for noises. <laughs> That's and I even so funny. snuck out and went outside. And like it was dark, and there were crickets chirping. And I was looking around, and I and I just thought to myself, somewhere out here in the dark, in these trees, are a bunch of clowns. Yeah. And they're coming to my cabin. <laughs> and and it was it was it was a really really scary sensation. And so then I just went back inside, and I, and I looked at my family sleeping. I looked at my baby sleeping, and my, my oh, kids no. and my wife. And I was like. What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> That's funny. And of course, it ended up not. Of course, it ended up not being a big deal because then I just heard a soft knock at the door and I opened it and there was a row of killer clowns. I said, and I just said, and I, and I just said, I said, never mind, you guys, and they just walked on. And so, so what? So it wasn't a big deal, but it was wow. still a really eerie feeling. He's like, feeling you know like what? I Screw that. I'm done. Signed up for something that You're... I regretted and I couldn't undo it, you know? And so I based a bunny call on that. Oh, oh that's awesome. That's interesting. You that you've got relatable stories. Um, do you have a relatable story with Fazgu? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, okay it, it, listen anytime there's a series of a fast whole bunch of different things you're gonna have some that are great and then some there's like well like what, what was going on with this you know i i don't know how to explain the fast i'm sure i had something in mind that 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 was really great but you know they can't all be winners no, <laughs> now, no i will say now i will say a couple of the other ones that had real life connections you, you know sometimes you hear about people talking about their sleep paralysis demons or whatever I, I, that's never really made sense to me, but now it kind of ma it kind of makes sense to me, and I don't know why it does. Yeah, every once in a while, a person will you'll you'll wake up, but you'll still be paralyzed in your sleep, and for some reason, I guess in that moment, you're still half dreaming, and so you have a tendency to still maybe see something before you fully wake up. And the blackbird creature was mine. That 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 creature on the cover of Blackbird is is my sleep paralysis demon <laughs> that's because so I was weird. I was on vacation, I was by myself, and I, and I don't know what the circumstances were. I feel like I was taking a midday nap, but I woke up with a jolt. And for a split second, I saw that thing standing over me and I couldn't move. And my body was tingling and I was just frozen up. And I, I was just so disoriented after that, but I never forgot that. And I knew immediately after that, it's like, I've got to get this into a story somewhere. Like this, this crazy <laughs> that, looking creature. That's, that's actually really that cool. That is crazy. That's so cool. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. I, I've never had sleep paralysis, so I don't know what my creature would look like but i hope it doesn't look like that <laughs> I, I don't think it's a normal experience It'd i don't think it's an experience you should want to have i don't I, yeah. I don't feel like it's a healthy thing so yeah. if you, if that hasn't happened to you i think you're in a good place do you have a least favorite story uh, i don't know I, I think it i think it probably might be the fast or no i mean come on it's it's got to be the one where uh 
the guy gets pregnant with Springtrap's baby. I'm not sure what I was thinking Matt, about. You know, again, that's one of those things. Matt, where, oh, Pat, man, be really creepy. But then he's you step back and look at it from afar and you're like ah, i don't know if this is a good idea and i swear i wasn't picking on matt pat that wasn't that wasn't a story are you sure it really really wasn't you know listen whenever you're doing these stories for this long eventually you just run out of names and you're yeah. going to cover all the names you know <laughs> yeah. eventually i'll get around to Daco, you know and so if you see Daco in one of these stories it's not something personal it's just because i ran yeah, out of names, okay you know? i don't know Daco is a very specific name that you'd have to get to <laughs> lewis I, maybe. I probably have a few more to go through before i get to that so you don't have anything to worry about when yeah my summary videos um, I, don't I don't know, know matt pat and prig is pretty funny people who loved goosebumps when they were kids uh find these really relatable right um, and I know kids at school now read Fazbear Frights like their, their Goosebumps books. And as a kid, my favorite TV show was Goosebumps. Would you ever think about uh, or like the idea of Fazbear Frights ever being like Ooh. a TV show like Goosebumps where it's like a series of some of the best stories or something? Oh, adapted? that's cool. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um... And that's something that can definitely happen, um, especially now that the first movie came out and was successful. I think that really opens the door to lots of other potential Ooh, that opportunities. Would be really, the only really thing cool. to be mindful of is I don't want to oversaturate the market and just create too much. And I think that um, sometimes sometimes we get a little bit of that where yeah. franchises have movies and too many TV shows and it just kind of waters everything down. But but i really do like that idea and it is definitely something that could happen for sure awesome so the next segment is the fnaf movie i've got some questions for you uh oh uh first off i absolutely love the movie as you know and i know a lot of people did as well the fans mm -hmm. absolutely loved it and it did really well at the box office as well super successful congratulations to you blumhouse universal so yeah um first question is how was working on the first FNAF movie after waiting for so long after announcing it back in 2015? Well, you emailed me back in 2015 uh, about it. I still remember that email. But yeah, how, how was it? it? It took a really long time to get off the ground, really just because of the screenplay. But after, after the screenplay was really yeah. locked in, from there, all the wheels started turning, you know, all the engines fired and oh, it took so off. Cool. And, and it was a really fun experience from there. And and really the screenplay just like I said the movie was amazing. It was um, so good. I bought it, it on uh, really, digital. You know, throughout mm. all of those years, Goated. I worked with Go a lot movie. of different directors, a lot of different writers, I'm excited for that. a lot of really talented people that eventually would end up leaving the project, but still really talented people. And it was really just a matter of um, there's just material that's difficult to translate yeah. to the screen. And one of the one of the biggest issues is is the animatronics, obviously being the monsters in the monster movie. If I yeah. were to approach any writer of a horror movie or any director and say, "Okay, here are your monsters, um, go make a monster movie with them," that's easy. You know, you give them all a knife, you go in, you just make your generic slasher, but just have it be, you know, Freddy, Bonnie, Cheek, and Foxy doing the slashing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, sure. the nuance here is that these animatronics are possessed by the spirits of kids mm -hmm. and these are innocent kids these are victims themselves so it's and it's very very difficult to still have a horror movie still have those kills that you need mm -hmm. but still preserve um preserve the innocence of those kids and it's a, it's a really difficult mm -hmm. thing to do and yeah. there were several screenplays that did not hit that mark and and i was i think i was more cautious about that and more picky about that than anything else um, if the if, if if kind of the innocence of those spirits was not preserved properly, I wasn't gonna go wasn't gonna go forward with it. And so, you know, one quick example is the way mm, that we fair enough. were able to have a couple of kills in the movie was obviously the vandals. You know, you have a group of people who are oh, breaking yep. in, they're disrespecting the place, they're trashing the place, they're there with bad intentions, and then you combine that with the fact that these animatronics are restless. You know, the spirits in them are these kids that are basically very confused and lost animals backed into a corner and kind of left with this impression that adults are out to get them. And then you have these violent adults mm -hmm. breaking in. And so it, it, it allows you to have those, that kill count while still being like, well, I can kind of see how that might happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, 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 it was a, tr it was a tricky thing to do, but I think we were able to accomplish Oh, they did that. a great job of that. Manipulated by William Afton still as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like... That, that, that's right. That's absolutely right. The, the, the drawing on the wall was also kind of this, this layer, this blanket of manipulation. I love over that part all. of the movie. So that all was those so things good. combined 
um, you could see how these actions uh, could happen while it not necessarily being the fault of the kids. With the fort scene as well, I loved the fort scene. I know some people were a bit confused by that, like, <laughs> why why are they building a fort? But I, I got it straight away. Mm -hmm. You know, you, yeah. you just want to show the audience that yeah. there's kids, right? You know. Uh, were you happy with the first movie and how it came out? Yes, I, I am. I am very happy. I mean, look, anytime anybody... I, I think pretty much anybody who's been through a process like this would be able to look back and I do this with my games too. You look back and you're like, well, I, I wish I'd tweak this. Oh, maybe this could have been like this, or maybe this could have been like that. Fair you enough. have to just really take a step back and yeah. look at it as a whole and and where it came from, all the things that could have gone wrong and all the things that went right. And just be really grateful that so many things just fell into place. You know, and I can give you a really quick example of why uh, why I don't want to second guess too much. You know, at the at the eleventh hour of this movie coming together, um, we still really didn't have a a a music composer and i hmm. really wanted an animated intro i was really pushing to have that 8-bit animated intro oh yeah but we didn't have anybody and really not really anybody to have a, have an idea of what kind of music we were looking for 11th hour newton brothers come in and they write off that banger of a track like yeah, scott saying bangers banger. like I, I you know i listened to that the first time and i was like wait a minute do i have a theme song does fine at freddy's have a theme song you know, and I, I even uh, I, I called I called you know Emma Tammy on the phone. I was like, wait, do we have a theme song now? Like, I can't tell you how excited I was over that. And you better believe you're going to hear that again at the beginning of the the second movie too. I mean, like, I, that was just so incredible. <laughs> the new really knocked that out of the park. Um. So yeah, uh, so that's many so funny. Right. That was an amazing I, intro I think, to the movie. I don't think I'm that was well genuinely on, probably my favorite intro. You know, what I would go back ever. and try to do differently. As we know, the movie was a major hit in 2023. Super successful. The biggest horror movie of 2023 as well. Yeah. Uh, how does that feel seeing that happen? Um, it, it's 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 nice. That part is nice. It's more important to me that if the critics had loved it, and but the fan base was grumbling and saying, "Wait, this isn't how it is in the lore. Wait, this I did. We didn't like this. I don't like how they did this, this, and this." And the fan base was unhappy. That would be a failure to me. I'm, yeah. I'm perfectly happy with all the critics hating it and the fan base reacting positively to it. So yes, it, it is nice that the movie was successful. However, that is not the correct metric by which to judge the success of mm. this movie. Um, he judges and, and all in, in the fact, success um, of his, all of the stuff the in his night, franchise on whether the fans the like, very we first like it or not. And the theater which was pretty much empty. There were only a couple other, other people in there, but it was a one o'clock showing. So, But still, I, I saw that as kind of a bad sign, but I just watched it anyway. Then I went to the I went to the next showing, which was just later in the evening, and I told myself I wasn't going to go online. I wasn't going to read any reviews. I, t I had already told everybody at Blumhouse, and I told my legal team, "Don't talk to me. Don't call me. Don't email me. Don't send me charts. Don't send me facts or figures. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything about anything. I'm going through this whole weekend. <laughs> That's blind. funny. I just don't want to experience what everybody else is experiencing. <laughs> Well, before I went into that second showing, I was just by myself. And, and then later that evening, my whole family was coming into town, by the way. My whole family was going to come in town and watch the movie with me that night. But this showing, I was still sitting by myself. I was checking my email, and I accidentally saw one of the reviews. And I saw that it was terrible. And that opened the floodgates, and I went and started reading all of the oh, other reviews. Oh, no. And I immediately texted my family saying, don't come. Don't don't come. You know, th th this is over. I want to be by myself. And I was already thinking in my head, like, how am I going to write a letter to Blumhouse apologizing for this? How am I going to write a letter? To oh, the fans man, that's so sad for this for just wasting everybody's time. <laughs> it's just one and review, I was man. Just incredibly depressed. I get I but get somehow it, somehow Jason Blum caught wind of of this. I don't know who I asked the question to or what I said. Oh, my God. But, you know, he he started just bombarding me with text messages saying, saying, Scott, the fans love it. The fans love it. You know, the movie's a big hit. Everything's great. He was just you know, in all caps. Everything all caps. My phone was just blowing with all caps text. Oh my god! And so he he really talked me through that to try to encourage me that that even though the critics hated it, you know there was a lot that there was a lot to be loved there by the fans. And so then I I had my family come into town anyway, and we just sat in a in a packed theater and listened to you know the cheers and enthusiasm, and it really lifted my spirits. But you know, for a couple of hours there, man, I was I was pretty distraught. I thought the whole wow. thing was just a complete disaster. That's really unfortunate. It <laughs> but, but it wasn't. It, it, all, it all worked out okay, you know. It all worked out okay. Yeah. And, and, and again, again, I, the movie's not perfect. There's definitely room to improve. Uh, it's a pretty but, damn good movie, yeah, though. I'm definitely happy that it was, in, in general, uh, received 
well by the fan base. The second movie, um, which is, you know, it's been announced that it's going to be coming out in 2025. Is it December 2025? Yeah, December 5th, 2025, I think. Is there anything exciting to talk about on the second mm. movie? Anything you want to say? I'm not going to give away too many details, um, but I, but I, I, I will say that I'm following kind of the mm. same formula where the first movie is focused on the first game. So okay, I'm going to well, try to carry on that tradition on with figured. future movies. And I think that that is absolutely the way to go. And I think everyone's going to be really, really excited for what's planned for the second one. You know, the first one was really challenging because it's so much setup. It's like, how do you establish all of this? Hmm. But now that we okay. have that launch pad, Interesting. where to go from there I'm, came a lot I'm curious to see that. more natural. Honestly, it, I really it, it, it felt a lot more natural. And we were able to really craft just a, a really great story, I think. And I'm, I'm, so I'm really excited about it. And I won't say anything more, but I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that everyone's gonna really love uh, what's, what's gonna, what's mm. gonna come around December 2025. Yeah, so give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Is Emma back and everything? Oh yes, yeah, well? Emma, yeah, Emma's Yay! gonna be back. She did such a great job on that first one, you know. Yeah, that's that's really good having the same director. So now we're going to be talking about yeah, Into let's the go pit, into the pit. Uh, the new game that's I will be playing this by the way. Mega Cat Studios. Uh, we just got the trailer, another trailer, a couple uh, like last go. week, um, and it looks amazing. It looks so oh, it looks good. awesome. Um, it is so amazing. Game based on a Fazbear Fright story. It's definitely been a unique experience. You know, I first started talking to. Make, I mean, it's been years and years since this that oh, game wow. has been in development. And originally, it was just supposed to be a little novelty one-off. It's like, oh yeah, here's this little company that makes 16-bit cartridges, and that was that was immediately appealing to me because I'm all about the Super Nintendo. And so if I so if I was so if oh. I could make something that would come on a on the Super Nintendo cartridge, you know, sign me up. That was <laughs> that was the most exciting thing, I'd, the most exciting product I'd ever, I'd ever worked on. It was wow. still just supposed to be a novelty, but as the development went on everybody was looking at it thinking this this looks this looks pretty good this actually looks really good um and so they just kept on going with it uh, they could have stopped a lot sooner and they could have they could have stopped with just a little simple novelty game but they just kept going and i kept looking at thinking yeah keep going and they kept going <laughs> and i would keep just looking keep at it and it just turned Forever. into this go. big More. full keep fledged going. full sized game um so we obviously decided to venture away uh. from strictly the cartridges um so that everybody can be able to play it on steam and everything but it's really unique it's just a really really unique game and i do love that it really gets into just this really gritty kind of these kind of gritty mm. graphics that i haven't seen since well i guess since the late 90s whenever you had those point and click yeah, type yeah, adventures yeah. and you had that real kind of a, a that pixelated art style that that can be really creepy at times i don't know it's going to be a really unique experience I'm i excited. think everyone's going to really be excited about it i really i really do awesome i can't wait to play it um how has it been working with mega cat studios then oh it's 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 been great it's been really great um i really haven't had to give them i mean i mean i have have had to give them direction but for the most part it's been weird they'll, they'll go they'll go into they would go into the hole for <laughs> six hole. seven eight months at a time and i wouldn't hear anything from them to the point where i thought is, is this okay and i would even you know i tell my i talk to the other people that i work with like is this game okay is this going to be okay are they okay do i need to check on this <laughs> no. check on them over there but then i would get an update and it would just be all this crazy new stuff and all this crazy detail this fluid animation it's just crazy, crazy, crazy That's stuff. That's hilarious. Um, and then they'd go back into the hole again for five, six, seven months. And, and then we just repeat that cycle. But but yeah, but now here we are finally at the end of that. That road, is, I think it's just turned out really great. Like actually, I said, really, really awesome. Unique, though. I think everybody's going to really like it. The, the reaction to the trailer has been amazing. All positive feedback about it. Super excited. Um, people love it. The, the story of Into the Pit as well. Um, Into the Pit's probably my favorite Fazbear Fright story. Yeah. Um, so with all the positive feedback about it, um, what do you see for the future of FNAF spin-offs uh, made by other <coughs> studios in the future? Oh, it's definitely a possibility. In fact, um, I'd really like them to start working on Fetch. I think Fetch would make a really good Ooh, game after this. Fetch? You know, some stories obviously cater more toward being okay. a good game than others. Fetch, but, huh? uh, There's something really scary about the thought okay. of something always being yeah. out there and kind of watching your house 
Ooh, and then yeah. and, and then trying to come in and do things for you like this is kind of a scary thought the thought that the thought that i might be online shopping looking for a specific thing and somehow something out there is hearing that and receiving that yeah and then gonna come to me sneak inside and, and put it somewhere without me knowing that it was there it's just it's just a creepy yeah, scenario that's, that's kind of weird setup. and i think it'd be uh, a, the story of fetch really is weird cool as to hell to stop this thing because obviously fetch was out doing a lot of menacing things to have to sneak around a neighborhood and stop this thing that's sneaking around so undetected mm -hmm. I, don't, I think it'd be a really cool game so hopefully that'll be the next project we'll see as the franchise Ooh, has grown bigger that's exciting what challenges have you faced with running a franchise of this size Oof. is there anything you it's the largest you horror franchise in the world I, I, I think something i should have maybe been doing better is i should have had at this a point better, yeah the better largest. structure in place as far as people to talk to the fan base you know, I've, I've always kept that on myself all during the years and, and in the early years I think that worked great because it was a a little indie game a yeah. little indie community and then me the indie dev just chatting yeah. with the community and talking but as the years go by and the f franchise gets bigger and bigger I don't know I, I feel like I've slowly, slowly kind of lost touch with the fan base unfortunately it's, it's not that same it's not that same that's relationship how, that's that it how it works with YouTubers I, I really too. used to enjoy chatting with everybody and just kind of uh i don't know and, and and i guess that's i guess that's expected because fnaf is is more of a it is more of a big it's kind of a just just kind of a bigger thing down and it's bigger than one person and i can't just pretend like i can hop online and chat with everybody and solve everybody's problems anymore used to i kind of could i could just go in there and chat with everybody and resolve yeah. little problems as if it was like just the squabble on a forum i can only <laughs> yeah, squabble. And solve it but this is not the same and I think that I should have realized that sooner. Yeah. And I'm really only realizing that's really that sad, this though. year. That that's really actually need to have a better structure in place. Why Mark Player you know, is so sad in a lot of his crying meme videos is because he um, lost people. He realized he wouldn't be able to have that running connection a, with a Twitter his fans page anymore. and official news feeds. You know, an official news feed so that there's not so much confusion about what's real and what's not real and real news and mm. fake news. And is this confirmed? Is this not confirmed? You know, I could have avoided years of that if i just kind of uh, had a better structure in place with well, now we do. people to listen to and like i said a new feed and someone else to just provide better answers to the fan base so I, i'm trying to get all that in place and i, th I really think it was I, th I think it would just better serve the fan base and i think everybody would be yeah. a little happier if it's not just me trying to jump in and <laughs> he jumps in once in a while on reddit he does yeah I, he I does think, i think the twitter's a great idea um yeah. we're recording this in june but you know it, it was announced today the schedule for what's coming out during that week is really exciting and and really good mm -hmm. uh, so people you know can get you know get excited for the anniversary they kind of know what's coming which is really exciting and you know commu communication like that um you know can it, i say daco is the best you know, office really i've ever seen that. from so any youtuber um, it's gorgeous. Looking forward to seeing what happens next on the Twitter, <clears throat> what they announce. And apart from the second movie to look forward to, is there anything else you could hint at uh, for the future? Don't any say, future don't say racing game. Or any little hints uh, to get people excited for the future? One, one of one of the one of the good things is going to be coming from Steel Wool, but that's going to be announced here in this same week that your interview is going to air. So. I think that that's it. in fact i'm not sure if it was right before this or right after this yeah it might have been right after this yesterday 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 okay okay um and obviously everybody knows about the movie and right now the the books are these uh interactive books which i read things like that growing up and so i'm, oh, I'm excited cool. about those and i've tried yeah. to add some depth into those to where you can actually collect items in them and things like that so it's really not just about picking a path it's about picking a path and getting something and then going to the other path and being able to use mm, something. So it, 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 makes that, it, yeah. it makes it more interesting and more intricate. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the plan for movies, games, and books. And I already told you my my hope for the next uh, Mega Cat game. And <clears throat> and there is another game planned with Steel Wool, but that's not going to be announced for a while yet. So I, I, I can't oh, talk about that. I've... But there is something down the pipe. 
Okay. I'm even, curious even what the be, stool announces. Even beyond what's being announced this week, there's something beyond, but I'm not. But I can't Ooh. talk about that. Yeah, so I won't spoil Ooh, anything. Like FNAF um, 10? No, that's Hell Wanted 2. FNAF it is, 11? It is good. So or FNAF please, 12, I don't know. Because you know, um, I don't. we don't know what the stool uh, announcement is here. The pit one. Um, VIP, is, is the interactive novel VIP another one as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah. VIP is... It's one that I did with Scholastic, just like the others, but it's just going to be free. It's specifically for this event. I mean, I might still be included in a box set later down the road, but no, for this week, it was made specifically for this event um, <clears throat> by the same by the same author, I believe, as the week before. So if you enjoyed that one, you will, you'll enjoy VIP. And I I'm, I really love the story for for VIP. I'm not going to ruin it, but it, it's mm. it's it might be one of my favorites. So hopefully everybody really enjoys that. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure it comes out before the interview. So okay, yeah. great. Future me, if you're watching, probably <laughs> loved it. There is a collab announcement tomorrow from this interview. Whatever it is, I don't know, but um. It seems that mm. you've been more open with collaborations. Please be dead by daylight. The, please. The, the, the please. Well. Please. Are you more open to more please. Since we last please. Spoke the last dead by daylight would be hilarious. Uh, like, would you be interested in whatever it is? I don't know. Like, Fortnite or Dead by Daylight? Have those popped into your head at all? Or I'm very careful with collaborations because i want to protect the brands and i want to make sure that five nights at freddy's stays as mm, five nights yeah. at freddy's and there are some games where even if i really enjoy the game it just doesn't feel like mm. a it doesn't feel like a good match it feels like a, it feels like a mismatch the brand integrity is the most important yeah. thing for me and keeping everything feeling like it belongs and so that's really been my only that's really been my only only hesitancy that makes sense. I, feel, I feel like i am branching out a little bit and i am a little bit more open to those things than maybe i was in the early years but i'm still very careful about it we'll just see we'll we'll see how things go okay um anything else you would like to add to finish off the interview let's see here um <laughs> no i mean I, I i think i think things are in a good place and like i said i think that the things that are i think the things that are on the horizon are all things to to be excited mm, about and I yep. think that everybody's going to really enjoy Please um, the give things me. That the fan base really going to enjoy, <laughs> and, and I wish I could. I wish I could talk about those more, but I don't. I don't feel like I can. So, do you think we're going to have another interview in ten years' time? <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be ten years. We, we we can try to do this a little bit more often. But what, uh, every five years? <laughs> yeah, every five. Every years. five years. Okay. Yeah. Hand, Let's make it a regular thing. Okay, awesome. That would be the nice. Thing that everybody has been begging me for this interview when. I announced it is the box that is everybody just wants to know anything about it because it is it's the biggest mystery out of the whole 10 years probably now, I yeah would say. uh maybe midnight motorist motorist is number two uh but yeah I'd he's not gonna say anything about midnight motors please do though i'm all ears that everybody wants like <laughs> even a tiny snippet of please give us a something. little bit of fruit come uh, on give us something help <laughs> okay okay please. well i i can i can please. try to give oh, please somewhat of an answer to that even though it might not be extremely satisfying for a lot of people. like he said back in the day so i would i would encourage people to to turn off the interview if if they don't want if they don't want an answer that they might not be happy with but you know whenever i'm making these games there are a lot of things that are in my mm -hmm. head that are just flowing give me ideas and when I have them and put them there, it's the first half of something. It's like a, it's like a string or a rope just like reaching out. And I know that what's there on the other end is there. I, I trust that it's there. I know that it's there. And then whenever I progress forward, the rest of that just reappears. The rest of it appears and is in just fits into place perfectly that's what? all my games have been made what? <laughs> I, I, okay. I i feel that there is something there and i make the roads to get there for that to be revealed uh -oh. but then sometimes when things do progress the roads aren't always the same roads as the ones that had been planned before okay and so what that means is even though at the time something was definitely there something was definitely reaching out to be there and i could feel that it was there the progression of the story didn't go there 
And so I, those strings never got pulled on. And those uh, and the other half of that idea remained in remained in the remained in the ether, remained in my subconscious. All of that to say, what does that mean? There is something in the box, but I never pursued it. And I don't know if I can find it again. And I think that that's the best answer that what I can possibly What does that get even that. mean? Scott, thank you so what? much for the interview. Uh, my He's like, I don't know if I really can even tell you what's in the box because uh, why would future, I do that? <laughs> week, oh, come on. Uh, future me uh, is probably uh, stressing out, uh, playing all the demos and in, getting ready for Into the Pit in a few days. I'm so excited for Into the Pit. Uh, I, I really, really am. And all the, the fanverse stuff as well. Uh, my pop goes and the joy of creation, that demo. I'm looking forward to playing all of those as, as well. And really I'm so excited. Cool. I got to watch Darko's uh, video on that, that too. Week. I'm going to just be MIA that whole week. I've already told my friends and family, like, I'm not, I'm not going to be here for the whole week. <laughs> don't, don't call me. Don't text me. I'm going to be in this room just doing everything I can mm. that week. And yeah, uh, we really do appreciate it. So yeah. If only I could have taken work off it. to do it. Which is really oh, weird. Oh. That, that hour went so quick. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I appreciate you guys. Man, uh, that was thank cool. You. Without you guys watching the channel. Um, How do you uh, all feel about the box? Let me know. Place, um, interviewing Scott. Uh, so it really does mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. And yeah, uh, I hope you all have a fantastic 10-year uh, anniversary week and you're all enjoying yourselves playing the demos and reading the books and stuff and are excited for Into the Pit uh, and Steel Wars announcement as well. That's so exciting. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you, Scott. We have no idea what it is, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll both leave now. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna watch this thank you for having me, Doco. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thank you, Scott. Bye, guys. Thank you. Oh, Daco, you lovely person. Well, that was that. Six hours ago, I had people comment on this. Oh, man. That was cool. So, overall, loved it. It was just as, I honestly, just as good as the first interview, if not better. I loved it. It was awesome. Amazing. Great interview. Perfect um this week has been amazing and i cannot wait to see the stool announcements as well that'll be nice his answer for the box was certainly interesting i will say I was not expecting that but hey that's 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 a choice i'm not upset with it and with that i really enjoyed that that was amazing let me know what you guys thought of it down below um let me know what you thought of his box explanation let me know what you guys are thinking of the whole fnaf week in general please let me know on twitter or anywhere really who cares but with that thank you guys for watching and until next time take care